We've lived in our Megaton home for quite some time now, but so far we haven't taken the time to get to know the neighbors. To rectify this oversight, we'll walk across the shack ramp to the south where we find our closest neighbor. This is the door to Jericho's house. But Jericho's not home. Instead, we find his place completely trashed. On the ground near to some boxes is a copy of Grognak the Barbarian next to a teddy bear impaled through the heart by a Chinese officer sword. Surely this happened by accident. Jericho wouldn't be the kind of guy to just impale teddy bears for fun, would he? He has a 10 millimeter pistol and a smoking cigar on a table to the northeast. And underneath his bed, located in the adjacent room, is another teddy bear with an empty whiskey bottle. What is a grown man doing with so many teddy bears? We find empty bottles of whiskey around every corner in the refrigerator lying in the shelves. Okay, I'm starting to get a picture about this Jericho guy. Well, let's see if we can go meet him. Jericho doesn't do much. He wanders between his house and Moriarty's saloon. Sometimes we'll find him inside of it. Sometimes we find him leaning against it just outside. He's almost always smoking a cigarette. And if we try to talk to him, he's not exactly hospitable. Oh, look, another one of your pampered vault assholes. Look here, vault asshole. I don't like you. Stay clear of me and we'll have no trouble. What a charming fella. Hey, Jericho, what do you know about the wasteland? None of your fucking business. All right. Well, never mind then. You goddamn right, never mind. Or we can pass an unarmed check to say, whatever your problem is, I suggest you get over it. Now. You're joking, right? I mean, I shit bigger than you, kid. Come back when you got some fight in you. Until then... Save your threats. Or we can pass a speech check to say, Did I miss something? What's your problem with me? You're from the outside, and I've lived too much of my life out there to trust every jackass nobody that wanders in from the wasteland. You seem all right, though. So I'll cut you a deal. I'll answer your questions so long as you don't give me any more reason to distrust you. Got it? Okay, got it. So then what do you know about the wasteland? I've said just about all I'm going to say about that. Which was absolutely nothing. Fine, changing topics. What do you do around here? Me? I don't do a damn thing. Well, unless you count staying pissed drunk and making Moriarty rich as something. Sure, I'm the best shot in town with the rifle, so everyone comes running to old Jericho when the raiders show up. But between raids, they're content to take my money and drag me home when I've had too much. <laughs> So what's the word around town? A little drinking money might loosen my lips a bit. Give it a try. See what happens. I don't think so. Your call, kid. Well, these ten caps should buy us something. <laughs> You're gonna have to do better than that, kid. Thanks for the drink, though. So, fine, go for the top shelf on me. Here's twenty caps. Whoa, twenty caps. Look at the big spender. All right, then. I can see you're in it for the big money. So I'll tell you all about Moriarty's. Moriarty, he's a rat fuck bastard for sure. But he's also paranoid as all hell. So paranoid that he don't let no one handle the cash around here. Every night he takes what Gob and Nova earn and locks it in a file cabinet next to his bed. So where's the key? It's dangling around Colin's neck. Get it. If you can. Why haven't you robbed him? My robin' days are over, kid. I'm just here to drink and stink. Sounds risky. What if he catches me? He'll probably blow your head off. That is, unless you can draw faster than a pissed-off Irishman. Thanks for the info, Jericho. Anytime. It'll be worth it to see the look on that asshole's face. All right, I'll be gone. Come back if you need something. We'll find Moriarty inside, or sometimes he'll be standing just outside overlooking Megaton. If we creep up behind him to pickpocket him, we'll find Moriarty's office key. 
Now the cabinet key you see here was cut from the game. This is the key that Jericho was referring to in our previous conversation. But without a mod installed that fixes bugs in the vanilla game, this key will not appear, leaving our only option to unlock that cabinet our lockpicking skills. Inside Moriarty's saloon, we find the cabinet to which the office key works in his back office near to the terminal. But it's also locked with a very easy lock. Inside, we find Moriarty's password, which is used to access the nearby terminal. This is important for the primary quest in the game. But the other cabinet that Jericho was talking about is actually upstairs. We have to find Moriarty's bedroom, and frustratingly, none of these rooms are labeled. But his room is the locked room in the far southwestern corner. It's locked with an easy lock, we can pick it, and then we find Moriarty's filing cabinet at the foot of his bed, but this is locked with a hard lock. So unless we have a mod installed that restores the key to Moriarty's inventory and we've looted it, we've got to pass a 75 lock picking skill check to access this filing cabinet. But inside, we only walk away with 120 caps. But it's interesting that Jericho has never gone for this himself. Seems like he hasn't really lived an outstanding life. He even admits to being a raider at one point. But to have left this alone for so long, maybe he really has changed. Or at least his confidence is so shot that he doesn't even try anymore. Going back to Jericho, we can say, you don't look like you belong here. What's your story? There ain't much to tell. I used to live out in the wastes. I was a real bastard back then, but I've put all that behind me. Have you ever considered getting back out there? What? Back out where? Uh, you know what? Forget I said anything. Why the fuck would you start saying it if you weren't gonna finish? Back out where? What are you talking about? No, really. Never mind. I see how it is. You best think twice before fucking with me again. Alright, but I am curious. Have you ever considered getting back out there? This again. Okay, I'll play along. Back out where? Out there in the wastes, man. You must be bored to tears in this town. I left all that behind me. There's nothing but bullshit out there. Killing, stealing, violence. I'm not that guy anymore. Oh, you're right. That sounds terrible. Nah. Yeah, you're right. Stupid idea, anyway. Yeah, killing, stealing. It sounds kind of fun, though, doesn't it? You know, I do miss it sometimes. It's a life of freedom, you know? But come on, I'm a washed-up old raider. What crew is going to take me on? These kids don't know nothing about respect. Yeah, finding a crew at your age might be tough. Good luck, though. Yeah. Thanks, I guess. Now, we can try to recruit him as a companion, but he has different responses depending upon our karma level. We can say, you should come with me. I could use a hand, but if our karma is too high, he says... No offense, kid, but you're not exactly the type I'm used to running with. Now, I've heard about you. A little goody two-shoes out of the vault. I don't think our styles would really mesh. Nah, it ain't so bad here. I got some good memories. But that's all I got. No sense in ruining the good ones, you know? But if we have evil karma, the next time we ask him if he's interested in joining up with us, he says... Yeah, I am. But I'm gonna need a thousand caps for supplies before I head out with you. A thousand caps? Actually, never mind. I don't need your help. Hmm. I see how it is. No use for a washed-up old waster, huh? Well, kid, the offer's open any time you want to take it. On second thought, here you go, a thousand caps. Let's get out of here. <laughs> this is going to be great. Some good old-fashioned violence. And Jericho joins us as a companion. Like with any companion, we can dismiss him at any time. Get out of here, Jericho. You're fired. What? Are you serious? Nah, I'm kidding. Yeah, very funny. Ha ha. Hilarious. Oh, no, I wasn't kidding, and don't make me repeat myself. I see how it is. The old man can't keep up. Whatever. Now be at Moriarty's if you change your mind. If our karma is still evil, we can always come back to Jericho to recruit him as a companion, though we have to pass an evil karma check. Let's get back out there, Jericho. Now that's what I like to hear. I'll be right behind you. However, if while running with us, we start to do too many good things and our karma improves, Jericho takes note. He'll even comment on it as we wander around. 
I didn't sign on with you so that we could be playing Santa Claus out here. Even if our karma has become neutral or good, he'll stick with us until we dismiss him. But if we dismiss him, and if our karma is either neutral or good, the next time we try to recruit him, he says... Sorry, kid. I just can't roll with someone like you. If you pick up a few bad habits, maybe I'll change my mind. So Jericho is for evil characters. We have to be evil to get him in the first place, but as long as we never dismiss him, we can keep him around regardless of our karma level. But if we like the guy, we just have to make sure our karma is back to evil before we try to dismiss and recruit him again. If during an evil playthrough we choose to blow up Megaton, Jericho still travels there when we dismiss him. Whatever. I'm gonna go see if there's anything left of Megaton. And when we go back to the Megaton ruins to fetch him, Jericho sheds no tears for his former neighbors. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Boo-hoo, Megaton blew up. These fuckers deserve what they got. Now, can we get out of here? Or should I just keep waiting next to this stinking hole? All right, let's go. Thank Christ. I thought I was gonna grow a fourth arm sitting next to all this fucking radiation. Like all companions in Fallout 3, he's mortal, so I'm gonna dress him up in a suit of power armor. I think he'll look good in some of Asher's T-45 power armor. And I hate to see this poor old guy without any hair. Must be hard, a man of his age, losing it all, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him Button's wig. There we go. That's the look I was going for. Jericho really is an evil companion. He has a reputation even here in Megaton. Back in Moriarty's saloon, if we steal the terminal key from the cabinet and then access his terminal, we find notes that Moriarty has written about many of the town's residents. One is on Jericho. Jericho's been a bad boy. I heard all about him in Jenny's stall. Tried to slip her some of the old gun barrel while she was yelling no. He is lucky the gun didn't go off, or that would have given the stall clan something to crap their pants about. He thinks he's king of the hill, walking around Megaton like he does all high and mighty. He tries to pull that stuff with me, and the Jenny incident goes public. Now, Moriarty is no paragon of virtue himself. He could be making this up. However, if we ever find Jericho wandering around Jenny Stahl, Jenny Stahl being one of the proprietors of the competing Brass Lantern restaurant, we have a chance to overhear this rather awkward conversation. Hey, Jenny. Looking good. What have What's you up? got for me today? Food, Jericho. It's all I had for you yesterday. It's all I have for you today. It's all I'll ever have for you. Come on, Jenny. Why you gotta be like yeah? that? You need something? Just trying to be nice to you. I'm not going to discuss it, Jericho. You know Hello? good and goddamn well why I'm like this. And don't you dare play dumb with me. Jenny, baby, that was a long time ago. I've left all that behind me now. People don't change, Jericho. What is it? Now order something and leave me alone. Either start talking or get the fuck out of my face. That said, Jericho appears to take his defense duties of Megaton seriously. We also have an option to find him wandering around and randomly interrogating a Megaton resident. A hey, book. come here. Actual I want to talk book. to you. Evening. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, sure. You know, I thought no about moving once. Anything I can do to help, you just let me know. Smaller settlements. But Look, hey, don't give me any of your shit. Now tell me something. And if you're lying, I'll know. <coughs> Are you working with the Raiders? You a scout. Bye. Frustratingly, that's where the conversation ends, but I get the impression that Jericho is really looking out for the best interest of Megaton, trying to weed out the raider scouts before they attack. After all, he told us that he comes to the town's defense whenever there is a raider attack, although he does miss the raider lifestyle. So I suppose it's possible that he's interrogating these Megaton residents, not to find ways to fight the raiders, but instead to find ways to join them. There is precious little information about Jericho from the actual game, but we do find a few tidbits more from the Fallout 3 official strategy guide. The guide tells us that his age is 65, which makes it even more disturbing that he was hitting on Jenny Stahl when she's only 24. He was so incredibly rude to us when we met him because he lives in fear. According to the guide, he's afraid that his past might catch up with him. He lived a life as a raider, and the guide says that he 
he murdered, stole, and lied with the best of them. He lives his retirement here in Megaton, terrified that someone will track him down to get revenge. This is why he spends most of his time drunk, so that he doesn't have to think about his impending fate. The guide also tells us that Jericho likely does rather unscrupulous jobs for Moriarty. It doesn't tell us what these jobs are, but I think we can get a pretty good idea. Moriarty knows a secret about Jericho, which we read in his terminal, and if we know Moriarty, he likely uses this knowledge for his own benefit to get Jericho to do things for him. Dark things, troubling things, things that would dirty Moriarty's pristine hands. Despite having lived as a raider, he's not a dumb man. Jericho knows that trying to raid at his age is only going to lead to his end, but being in Megaton by himself and stationary makes him an easy target. And with all of this information, it makes sense why he's eager to travel with the Lone Wanderer. Moving around from place to place makes it harder for him to be found. He gets to do something he loves, adventuring, even murdering, and he can't be manipulated by people like Moriarty. Like all companions, Jericho has random things to say while he travels with us. Most of these revolve around his own physical ailments, his age, and things that annoy him. <coughs> Is that blood? <coughs> Damn it! Come on, let's get moving. Goddamn collar on his arm is too tight. Man. Am I out of smokes again? After hearing this, I found some cigarettes and went ahead and put some in his inventory. And immediately, he pulled one out and started smoking. Though he tends to do this smoking animation often, so maybe this was just good luck. And like all companions, he has his own battle style. Instead of using a combat shotgun like Sharon, he likes to use an automatic weapon. But he is just as vocal in combat. Are you fucking kidding me? Is that the best you got? You are so dead. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I did this. Damn it, it hurts. And that's the full story of Jericho, a good beginning to mid-game companion who's surprisingly difficult to get, requiring a narrow window of karma and a thousand caps. But now that I've got him, I may have him tag along with me for some time, give Sharon a bit of a break. What are your thoughts on Jericho? Did you ever recruit him in your own gameplay? Was he your go-to guy on your evil playthrough? Do you like his old, cantankerous, raider personality? And what do you think of Jericho as a person? Do you think he's a horrible old man for his life of raiding, stealing, and even murder? For what he tried to do to Jenny Stahl? Or do you think that he's just a successful survivor? After all, he made it to 65. Was he just doing what he needed to, to survive in a wasteland? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Lawbringer. This celebrates the destruction of our enemies when using energy weapons and turning them into piles of ash. On top of the pile is an index finger we can take back to the regulators. My companion shirt to this one is... Tap that ash. And if you don't like the text on either of those, you can always get a version of the shirt with just the image. I have a wide selection of other shirts in the shop, so you can click the link in the description below to check them out, or you can click here. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook to keep up to date with all Oxhorn news. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.